إلى الجلسة الرابعة لليوم دور الذكاء الصناعي في أعمال التأمين ندعو رئيس اللجنة السيد رئيس عفوا الجلسة السيد محمد أبو حمد رائب رئيس مجلس الإدارة في جو كليمز وأيضا المتحدث السبيكر مستر أندريا ماريا ماجستير ورأس المال الاستثماري والاستشارات الاستراتيجية مؤسس وشريك إداري في إمباكت فاندري المملكة المتحدة معاي اليوم المتحدث مستر أندريا المحاضرة راح تكون لليوم بالإنجليش كونه مستر أندريا هيز فروم يو كي سو إف يو هاف أني كويستشن عندكم أي سؤال مخصوص الترجمة أي حدا يرفع إيده مباشرة راح تكون الترجمة موجودة سو so نبلش نحكي شوي عن مستر أندريا مستر أندريا ماريا كوسنتينو He has a magister and he's the founder and CEO of Impact Foundry, a venture capital studio and strategic consulting boutique that accelerates startups, SMEs, and corporate enterprise to enable growth and sustainable value creation. He's a finance, digital transformation, and entrepreneurship expert at the ESCB Business School and advisor to several startups and accelerators, including Barclays Rise and Level 39 in London. So uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Andy, to have you here. And today, uh, as you know, we will discuss the role. OK. So if you have a tarjima mawjuda bizzawiya, I think. So if you had a tarjima, we can take the jihaz from the mantra that is mawjuda huna. So uh, today, as you know, if, is, uh, if you need to know more about Mr. Andy, you can just scan the QR code showing on this screen and then you can communicate with him and you can consult him for anything related to IT, uh, artificial intelligence and digital transformation. <coughs> so today, as you know, we are discussing about the AI and uh, we would like first to ask Mr. Andrea. So what does AI mean? Is it a good or scary thing? So yes, you yeah, that's a very now. good question to start scaring everyone. I think um, I wanted to bring this to your attention. Um, hard to play right now, but essentially it's a news that came out two weeks ago explaining how companies like IBM, for example, or um, a very famous learning company in the UK called Chegg, um, their stock plunged and they stopped hiring people because of the effect of ChatGPT. I'm sure most of you heard about ChatGPT, which is a conversational AI tool and the news are not really uh, you know, promising on one hand, but on the other hand, also there is a lot of development that can be done with it. So I think the answer to that, it is very much like everything in life. It really depends what you do with it when you're given a great power. Uh, but in order to make the most of it, I think we all need to understand you know, what really AI is and what the solutions are, because you can't make the most out of a tool if you don't understand really uh, how it works. Yes, exactly. So, so maybe, you know, I think it would be beneficial to just give a refresher uh, to everyone and remember that, sorry, and remember what AI is. So AI in mere terms is trying to leverage technology to replicate the human brain, okay? So that's artificial intelligence. Now I'm sure you heard other terms such as machine learning, deep learning. Now these are sub-sectors sub of AI and the idea is to leverage data Okay, which are really, really important, is the raw material by which this brain works to extract features, to extract statistics, for example, and then infer conclusions. Now, um, one thing where AI makes a difference is that it's able to learn. And that's where also the difference between machine learning and deep learning comes in place. Machine learning is something like statistics, really. So let's say you have a lot of data, uh, for example, on claims, let's say, you're able to digest uh, a large amount and extract some conclusions, but conclusions that are quite linear. If you leverage deep learning instead, you're trying to replicate the human brain. And it's like when you want a favor from someone and he goes like, I know a guy that knows a guy. And this is essentially our brain, how our, our brain works. So by looking at uh, links between the, all the different informations that we have, we are able to then find uh, innovative ideas. And this is essentially where uh, technology is trying to get to. So this is, I think, then the difference between, um, as you see in the chart, um, 
artificial intelligence that is um, uh, narrow AI and artificial intelligence that, that generates general AI. And so essentially, I tell you to do something to the machine and the machine does exactly that. There's a general AI which implies a more creative way of leveraging uh, these capabilities. Um, I'm not gonna, I think I'm not gonna bother you, bore you more with a uh, more technical explanation, but I think something that can be interesting for everyone is a bit of numbers. So if you look at the statistics, we see that a lot of companies, and this is kind of outdated because it's end of, uh, end of last year really, that's the best I found, uh, but tells you already a lot of companies across industries and across businesses and regions are leveraging AI and automation for their business, finding already tangible uh, benefits and tangible results that they can experience. Yes. Thank you, Andre, and I think these are sufficient information after being in the fourth session for most fruitful information. So now my question to you, as you are expert in UK and, uh, and also in Europe, what's the current state of insurance in Europe and in UK? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I you know I know I'm coming to the MENA region, so of course the idea would be to bring you something rather than giving you what you have already. Um, uh, you know your region better than me, probably. But what I see happening in the EU and UK, of course, there, as you know, like most of Western uh, Western parts of Europe, there there is it's a challenge in time. Uh, high inflation, uh, the crumbles of the war between Russia and Ukraine, uh, issues with pipeline and supply chain in the UK per se. Like we are facing definitely, uh, you know, challenging times now. For sure, all the industries are contracting uh, quietly. Now, uh, in Europe, I think um, the most impactful events have been mostly, of course, COVID, like everywhere else, but also the uh, role of climate change, which we're going to touch in a little bit. Um, when we look at UK specifically, um, there are other challenges. So, you know, there is a Brexit challenge, which implies that all companies, especially insurance companies, need things like passporting to market their product abroad as well. And you know that London is insurance central, really, is where most of the insurance companies of the West world uh, are based, and they were born probably. I mean, England, the, the story of London is around insurance, really. Um, but, and then there is capital challenges, so the regulation as well. Since Solvency 2 has been put in place back in 2016, we have seen a high uh, raise in terms of cost of capital, for example. And so this is where you know, the pace of the industry that is not running at the base that it should, that's when you start hitting uh, balance sheet and performance of insurance yes, companies. Excellent. That's understood. So now you have briefed us some about the insurance in the UK and about the AI. So if you would like to merge the AI and the insurance, so there is a terminology called insurtech, right? So yeah. what does insurtech mean? Well, insurtech, as you mentioned, is the merge uh, between uh, you know, insurance and technology. I think you can think of fintech, which was really the uh, the early days of you know financial worlds that miss technology. Even though, by definition, the financial world has always been uh, one of the most technologically advanced. If you think that the first uh, connection of hedge funds cable was built between New York and London, like back in the days where connection was a, a very new thing, um, and. If we look at data, data has always been at the core of the insurance sectors per se. So, you know, like actuaries, they, they base all the work on data and information that they have. So, InsurTech is just the next level of, you know, what uh, we see happening in the um, fintech, fintech space. Now, why as much as in fintech we see InsurTech coming up is because, of course, there is a lot of challenges in the industry. And as we know, competition among conglomerates is one of those. Uh, regulation, I mentioned it. And then there is new things, as we, as we say, like customer experience as well. I mean, I remember personally, uh, you know, again, living in a place where services are quite evolved and still I kind of dread the moment I have to deal with my insurance because I don't know how long it's going to take or what is going to happen next. In a world where we want everything yesterday, not even now, I think it's key to remember the customer experience is a key driver of performance and revenues. And of course, other new challenges, like for example, cyber threat. That's something that the more technological we get, and the more we're trying to make more money with AI and things like that, then we have to think, okay, but this opens new doors and new entrants for potential threats, right? Think of your company like a building as it could be, and the more connections you have, the more windows you have, and the more doors you have, and so the more risks you have, right? So you need to then think of new ways to protect yourself. And finally, as I mentioned, climate change. 
climate change is something that you know is there, is happening, and because of, as we will see later as well, like is one of the areas where actually there can be an opportunity for uh, insurances to diversify their uh, product offering. Um, I think. You know, in terms of challenges, one is for sure fraud, uh, fraud detection. Um, I mean, who hasn't ever had an accident with a car and then goes down to the body shop and is like, ah, oh, you know, I just bought my, broke my, you know, the front of my car, but hey, there is that little scratch, you know, like kind of raise your hand if you never did that because I don't believe it. So that's one of the most um, known issues of the insurance industry. And then, of course, we have other bits, right? The underwriting in terms of pricing. Again, as we mentioned, the more information you have, the better underwriting you can do. But if you don't have that information because there is an agency problem, you're lacking that performance indicator. And then, of course, the streamlining of processing. I think insurance right now is still at that stage where a lot of things are done manually, especially in certain regions where, you know, all digitalization is what gives you an edge. And as a general piece of information, less than 30% of the world, a small, medium business is digitalized these days. So, you know, we see 5G there uh, and us having like fancy presentations, but really like there is no, uh, you know, I've seen people coming up on stage earlier and still holding their uh, piece of paper and, you know, piece of research, I come up with this, right? But I'm one out of, uh, six people, so I think that kind of explains the ratio if you look at yes. it. So now mentioning fraud, uh, talking about some of that, your friend who had a frontal damage and he would like to fix and repair the rear of his car and some other challenges for the underwriting and for the process. So Andrea, I can see that you sound negative by just mentioning some challenges. So we are talking about the AI and this is being scary. So what's the solution now do you suggest by implementing the AI? Absolutely, like, uh, I don't want, again, I don't want to scare anyone, I'm just giving you the real picture. But uh, um, for sure we have a plenty of solutions out there, um, and there is technical and non-technical, really. Like Technical, of course, leveraging technology the best way we can. Maybe we can expand on it a little bit later. Um, but also uh, addressing actual business issues, right? Because it doesn't matter the technology, we have to remember we're running a business. So the basics are you want to, uh, you know, make more money, you want to optimize your costs. Um, and of course, there is plenty of solutions out there in terms of cybersecurity. Um, I was teaching at a business school a couple of days ago, and we had a full uh, lecture around it. And the good thing of AI, for example, is that it doesn't just mean more threats, but also it means more uh, solutions. So I, I go back to my initial point, which is very much how, you know, what you do, what, what you do about it. Uh, and again, I mentioned climate change because that's an opportunity again that can be leveraged by insurance these days because everyone is scared about, uh, you know, floods and uh, kind of disasters and they need to be covered for that. So now you are talking about embracing technology. Um, so now what will be the impact of implementing AI on insurance uh, companies, especially, you know, some insurance companies, they're going to think of uh, this is what's how beneficial this integration for me as an insurance company? You know, there are efforts, cost, and blah, blah, blah. So how can this AI integration impact the fields? Yeah, the impact for sure is great. Um, as I mentioned, the more you, you need to think, I, I mean, most of you here are insurers and, you know, or work in the space. Think about your business. Think how much paper you use and how much human power you have to use to do most of the tasks. And that gives you already a measure or how much you can actually say by leveraging uh, AI and uh, automation. I think this chart that I'm displaying here is pretty interesting, because if you look just on the shoulder of Mohammed there, you can see that claims is the area where actually there is the most critical and the most impactful applications of AI. Uh, why? Because most of that, of course, right now is done manually, and that's where the most uh, improvement can be done. Other areas like product management, things like marketing, sales distributions, I think they are not, of course, the core business of the companies, of insurances. So, I mean, for sure there is improvement that can be done, but probably you are outsourcing that already to someone. So what you need to, what you want to do is look at your core business and understand where you can, uh, you know, make the real change. It's the usual 80-20 rule, right? So change that 20% that is going to have the 80% impact. And that's how you should think when you apply this type of solution to your business. Um, some did already. And as you see, some numbers don't lie. Like there is, you know, 75% moved into the chatbot space. Uh, there is 1.3 million 
uh, expected in terms of savings. And if you spread these about the amount of companies, which again, if we look in terms of the real uh, tier one players, is not many, many, um, you can realize that actually it's a lot of money for a few people that can be saved by leveraging these technologies. Um, I think in terms of other application, as I mentioned, of course, there is uh, fraud detection, which essentially AI, I'm probably gonna see an example later, but AI can help you very much uh, improving that step, which we know there is a massive human bias and bribes. And again, the example that I, that I, that I gave you before about you, you, you yourself going to your local body shop and try to get more money, uh, more value out of your money. Uh, there is a streamlined process, which again, mentioned means, you know, everything that is manual, try and automate, and we've seen this happening in the banking sector already, especially since 2008. And then, of course, precision. Like, at the end of the day, it's a statistics game, right? And you wanna have the best uh, numbers that help you making the best decisions so you can charge the best premium without ending up making a loss. And by having all this data and being able to have a bigger brain now that is available to you, and not like 100 employees that have to crunch Excel the whole time, you're gonna be able to get a, a quicker, better, uh, more specialized results than you were before. So in terms of benefits, uh, you know, I think it's self-explanatory really in terms of what I uh, exp explained, but there is e expansion in efficiency. So efficiency is a core metric by which you have to measure these solutions. Um, of course, um, you know, uh, Customer experience, as I mentioned, is another one. And then there is revenue growth, which comes with differentiation, but also in terms of amount of customers that you can serve with one solution, for example. Okay, that's great. So I hope now ever, everyone got a clear idea how beneficial integration of AI within insurance company, and then we come up with the insure tech. So Andrea, as you know, I have co-founded Joe Claims three years ago. And um, where do you think the landscape for such startups in our region or, or all over the world? Great question. Like, um, again, as you know, I'm, I'm on the VC space, right, in the venture capital space, so I crunch startups every single day of my life, which I love. Now, um, I, if we look at the landscape, um, couple what I told you before, right? The insure tech industry and the insurance industry is following a, in a locked way what FinTech went through 10 years ago. So now FinTech is a bubble. It's, it's like literally overcrowded, especially in Western Europe. I do actually follow a few FinTech companies here in MENA, and I realize that there are solutions that are literally copy-pasting here, and that's great because they get fast entry to market, so there is a massive opportunity for companies and capture what work in other countries and apply to these countries. Um, so, you know, again, the insure tech is following more or less the same way, and if you look at the landscape, this is like uh, source, um, CB Insight, which I suggest every one of you to subscribe to, is a very good source of uh, reports and give you very interesting names. I, this is the situation in US, Europe, and APAC, right? Now, as you see, there is a lot of startups out there, and these are just literally the top 25, top 100. And you can think that there is so many other smaller players that are entering the market. This is what MENA region looks like uh, as of, uh, I think it was end of Q1, if I'm not wrong. Um, and we see that basically claims management is for sure one of the areas addressed, uh, reinsurance, infrastructure, uh, data analytics. Um, and then you need to think that this is just what falls under the insure tech umbrella. Then you have, there is more services that are actually, you know, can be plugged into the industry because they serve a part of the business that you're running. So actually there is a lot, um, there is a lot of offer out there. Now, uh, getting a bit more practical, of course, I brought up a little business case. Tractable comes from my dear UK, and Joe claims, of course, a local player. Um, I made a comparison, and I think what, of course, you can read the bullet points, but I think what really we take away from this example is one. Uh, the technology is there, and as is, this goes down exactly what I was telling you before. AI per se is available. Image recognition is something that exists, okay? You can source it pretty easily. But then the question is, okay, what are you gonna do with A, the data that you have, and do you have enough data? And B, how are you gonna implement and plug this in into your workflow? And I think this is where the difference lies, because if, if we look at Tractable, they only address one, one part of the issue, which is image recognition, there is no streamlining, even their database is kind of you know, limited, 
and then what about the famous so what? So once I have this image, what am I going to do with it, right? Now where Joe Glimps comes in place in this case, I think it is pretty amazing. Um, it is not only streamlined the process, so it's something that you can implement in your whole workflow, which means help you save more money, but also has the biggest database, if I'm not wrong, uh, based on what I found in, in Jordan, in, in Jordan yeah, and Spanish in the Middle East. Now, it is literally the same game that financial services providers were playing 30 years ago. It doesn't really matter the quality of your solution. I mean, I'm not going to do names, but I don't know any one of you that works in banking or has experience with banking tools. There are some that are very, very famous, but when you use them, they look horrible and they actually don't even do the work. But because they've been there forever, they have the best amount of data. And so being the first, the first entrant in a market and collecting the most quality data, then it's going to allow the machine to, when I say the machine, I mean AI and machine learning, to actually extract the, be the best value. And so giving you the best solution to then implement in your business and say, say, save a lot of time, really, like, yeah. you know? But I think that's my perspective. You know your business better than, my, that better than me, so maybe there's something more that you can say about that. Yes, actually, uh, in Joe Claims, I'm just going to speak it just in briefly. Some of the solutions that we have provided in Joe Claims, uh, mainly we have provided four solutions. The first one is to digitalize motor claim process and uh, AI insurance pricing and underwriting. Uh, optimized customer experience, and finally, we could uh, provide reports and a KPI so insurance company they can improve their internal cycles. Uh, for the achievements and other stuff, I'm not going to mention it here, but we are proudly saying that we have the largest, as you mentioned before, interconnected network, and we are dealing with around 12 insurance company, and most of the POs and repair orders they are being sent through our system. It is, all like, it is very much about building uh, quality, yes, but in this case also quantity is very important. Yes. And being the, for having a first mover advantage yes, and you know, being able to gather all this network exactly. of providers, yes. parts, database and everything. And this is where, as you mentioned before, the machine learning and the AI, once you integrate this database together, so now we could predict the cost of the claim, the, the cost of spare parts within the, the, the technology and we really thank our customers for believing and trusting our s solutions. Fair enough. No, yes. That sounds very promising. Thank you. So now here, I think most of the attendees here and uh, from the C level, from the C suite, and the general managers. So here, how can they improve and they grow their profits just by leveraging AI within their insurance companies? If you can just answer that. that, that, that that's I'm sure the, the most reason why everyone is sitting at this table today, really, no? Because we don't do charity here. All we do is make, try and make business. And I, and I appreciate that. So <laughs> probably telling you how you can make more money or save, save more money is the most interesting part. Now, let me just call up this one. Uh, yeah. So this slide essentially is, um, is not mine, yeah? just for reference, it's from McKinsey, which uh, of course is the reference point, and explain the uh, general strategy when you want to implement data, but also uh, looking at insure tech and um, insurance incumbents in the space. Um, I think the first suggestion is one, look, there is a lot of lack of talent, okay, tech talent, and if you think about the age of the oldest insurance companies, which are the one ruling the market, is something that you know is reflected also in the workforce, as you probably all agree. Now, to leverage the new technologies, you need also need fresh talent, and at least in Europe, some insurance companies that start and doing that, um, and that's one way that they went down. So they started trying and hire the best brains. Now, the problem one is retention, so you need to not only find the best talents, but also keep it, which, trust me, is really a challenge. But then there is another strategy, which is partner with the insurance tech. I mean, I just gave you a list of probably 100 potential companies they can work with. We have one sitting here. Um, try and find these capabilities where you, know, you can't get them in-house by hiring someone. So it's the usual buy versus build, okay? That applies to literally, again, every single industry that is moving into, that is transitioning into technology. And sometimes you can't build it, just buy it. Because actually there is agile companies out there that are able to just maybe address one bit, okay? But give you that specific solution. If you're able to puzzle all the pieces together, you can actually create your customized only one, um, only one solution. Another thing is don't just be reactive, be proactive. 
uh, solvency to, uh, I think I was reading, there is some regulation coming up in, in the MENA region as well. Uh, there is more regulations coming up for sure uh, in, in, the, in the next years. So rather than be there, just wait for the regulation. Also, if you want to outpace your competitors, try and be there before them. And maybe, you know, uh, like they did for ESG, environmental social governance, um, and the article six and nine, like some companies that were just literally self, um, like self-applying the regulation on them just because to look better than their competitors and actually kind of worked. And they were already ready when the others were obliged to comply with both, uh, with both articles. So at the end of the day, first mover advantage is always, is always a, win, um, a, winning, uh, a winning strategy. And then, as I mentioned, how do we make more money? Um, well, you need to differentiate, right? Now, the threats, because your business is a business that I mean, theory is happy when there is more threats because people are more scared and so they need to cover themselves. Then, well, cyber, cyber security and environmental, um, the environmental impact are definitely two areas that you want to get into because cyber security insurance, um, parametric and weather insurance, and I'll add you one more actually. Um, if you are familiar with crypto blockchain, like that's a space where I'm sure you all read the news about FTX and other happenings. Uh, is a space that is very interesting and actually this is a massive gap in the industry right now because not only is not fully regulated but people can't even be covered um, if they lose anything. There is an interesting case of a very good friend of mine nonetheless, one of my founders. She managed to get uh, an NFT has been stolen from her and she managed to get it um, refunded by suing basically the wallet provider which in theory, it was the first case, I think in the world, someone that managed to do that. So if based on that, you're able to build an insurance product, there you go, you're gonna probably be the first mover again and the only provider. Uh, I found something just funny because I wanna share. A third area could be pet insurance. Uh, not my speciality really, but I think most of us during COVID, so okay, let me get a, let me get a you know, pet or something else because I feel lonely or something like that. Um, or maybe I have more time. And in fact, a lot of people did, and now there is more pets there. And so actually there is more demand uh, for this type of insurances. Um, so yeah, this is probably my, my, my overall uh, suggestion. Uh, I think we will share the content at the end, so you will find this one as well. Uh, and this probably gives you more of a breakdown of what I just described to you, I think. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So here, uh, to conclude, what do you think would be the killer applications of the AI insurance industry? Yeah, so killer application is um, a couple of things, okay? Um, for sure, it is important. Uh, I would say, let's, let's give four uh, pre-suggestions, okay? One is, as we said, get familiar with AI and automation, like that's key. And of course, then more practical stuff, like have an actual plan that would be a long-term and get familiar with data. As we said, data is the core of your business, if you haven't realized yet, but I'm sure you do know. So what are you doing with it? This is the real question. So having a strong data strategy, it is very important. And then, oops, sorry. And then um, I think the, the final one is kind of a composition of, of everything that we discussed, right? So there is something that, you know, we didn't really mention during this presentation, IoT, Internet of Things. So biometrics, um, um, sensors, yeah, I'm, I'm sure most of you have the Apple Watch, for example, right, and things like that. Uh, so leverage IoT to gather better data, and by leveraging IoT, gathering better data, and leveraging AI, which means having a bigger brain that can think, that can think smarter, right, you can then output better performance. And so by having all of these, you can have actionable insight and a technical advantage over uh, so, your competition. Since you are talking about leveraging AI and, you are, and your business helps startups and companies to leverage AI. So, and I hear that you have a gift for the audience and the guests here. So yeah, yeah. would you mind to share it with us? Absolutely. So uh, yeah, we do. That's part of what we do. Uh, we help companies build their, their data strategy and startups, scouting startups that can help you, um, you know, having this kind of technological advantage. Uh, also, me and my co-founder, we wrote a little book. So if you guys want to have a read, you can scan the QR code or there is a link, of course, uh, massive discount for everyone at the Akaba conference. Uh, but that could be, you know, it's not, it's not a massive uh, piece of book, but 
uh, it definitely gives you the gist of business models, uh, basics, and is built for non uh, for non executives, so for non technical people, but executives. So our target are people like you, they're director, or CEO, that need to understand the technology, but probably you're gonna hire someone to do it. So I'm not gonna teach you how to code, but more like understanding half of the stuff that we discussed during this. Um, during this presentation. And I mean, in general, this is what we do. Uh, Impact Foundry is my business, and Tesseract Academy is one of the uh, startups that I have my incubation portfolio. And they basically build a university that teaches executives how to deal with data. And Thank you, Andrea, and, and we really appreciate your experience and the information you have shared with us. Thank you again, and hopefully we can see more companies that leveraging AI and they can go with digital transformation into just improving what we have seen, the challenges, and we try hopefully to use the solutions that you have shared before. Thank, thank you very you much again. for And if you have any question, please, you can share it with us. Thank you for being a yes. great moderator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your time, uh, nice presentation. Uh, I will have to say um, artificial intelligence in insurance markets has many issues. Uh, you uh, actually discussed uh, some of them when it comes to that uh, privacy, security, biases, and fairnesses. This is the most important one for me. Uh, artificial intelligence today discriminate on the ground of race, and for me it's more important like gender. Like women today in the insurance industry like have less right compared to men, uh, have less leadership positions. Uh, this is a serious issue. Like how do you know, given the fact that it's a common, it's like a globalization today, uh, that your institution or whatever going on in um, UK established certain type of regu regulation to make sure everything is going well. This is one thing. The other thing, um, also, we have ethical consideration. Today, actuaries misuse artificial intelligence when it comes uh, to pricing and underwriting, also uh, claim handling. So if there's any specific regulation or model laws uh, are there in the uh, UK to address such issues? Thank you. Thanks for your question. I am, I'm smiling because I've been asked this question, I think, four times in the last 48 hours in three different places. So like, um, so you're asking two questions. One about, um, the first one was about how, uh, remind me, sorry, the first part was about how we make sure. Discrimination against women in the insurance industry via artificial intelligence. Are there any regulation in UK or in Europe? But because you asked something else before. And uh, yeah, this is the first one. It's like a bias and fairness. Okay. Bias and, bias. and the second one is ethical consideration. Uh, okay, I tell you, in the US, we have model laws. Like we, nothing yeah. is established yet, but yeah. we have model laws and we require insurers who use artificial intelligence to disclose it with us. So yeah. we can track what the heck is yeah. going on in the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Okay. Uh, I'll start from the regulation. Uh, from a data perspective, because as we mentioned, even, be, even before you get down to the AI space, right, there is the raw material, which is data. So how do we handle information and security? Now, in, in Europe, as I'm sure most of you know, we have GDPR. Uh, that's a massive drive. That applies to UK as well, so it's kind of covered. Um, here in the Middle East, and I know this because I was doing some research on that space, a few months ago, I know certain countries of GC GCC fall under a common regulation, which is shared between, I think, Saudi, Bahrain, Jordan as well, uh, and another country uh, that has been unified last year. Um, but most of the other countries, they own their own regulation. Now, this is one issue, you're right, because then how are you going to apply AI and how are you going to source the data in every single country? There is always going to be a different way, so it's risky. I don't have, of course, like, my answer would be a unified regulation, but I'm not the regulator, so I can't uh, you know, give you more than that. Um, on the, um, in Europe, from an AI perspective, though, there is an AI regulation that is coming up. Uh, they are actually working very hard on that. Um, there is a, even a website. There is a, a, a uai regulation.eu, I think, something like that. 
and that essentially is a common uh, work that they're doing to address exactly what you're saying. So you know, how do we actually use it? Which takes me to the ethics. Now, it is like what I said at the beginning. From a big power, you know, there is big responsibility, like someone said a few, few years ago. And the, the ethical consideration is, first of all, who are you going to make this technology available to and why? Now, the risk with that is you can't be restrictive because everyone should have access to the best technology, but you also have to be mindful. And it's a bit like, it's, it's a bit like weapons, right? You can hold a gun for self-defense, but you can also harm people with that. So I think the regulatory piece should actually address how these technologies are leveraged to then create value rather than destroy it. And I think this is where if you are able as a company to show that because you're implementing a certain technology, you are able to create value and to create opportunities, then you're worthy using it. But if you're actually destroying value, well, at that point, no, you shouldn't be using it. So I hope he answers your question. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question, actually. Uh, so regarding AI and motor claim, uh, it's very clear that uh, how AI would be used to streamline and automate the cycle of motor claims. But uh, could you give an example of how it could protect against fraud, uh, fraudulent uh, claims? I mean, do you have a, did we reach a level where we can detect through AI a fraudulent uh, motor claim yes, at this point in time? Yes. So uh, let me answer this question. So I think with the data we gathered before in our database, we can detect if this car, for example, has been damaged with the same area for multiple times. So we can detect this thing. Also, by implementing the image processing and the AI, we can know the way that this damage happened some way. So we can know if this is a manual uh, accident or this is a normal accident. Also, by having multiple information from different companies using the VIN number, you can detect if this VIN number is recurring with different in, insurance companies. Then you can call to the insurance company and then you can investigate more. So I think, yes, that so will help a lot. Uh, sorry, but the main concern here is about the data, the quality of the data. Uh, how to obtain the data? Is it real time? The accessibility, the, is it relevance, is it uh, appropri the appropriateness, uh, the uh, coherence yes. could be uh, integrated with other data and this is the system, uh, so please. And uh, do you have uh, enough data, big data to, 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 to take the decision from the system directly? Yes, yes. So uh, the, the the, the kind of data AI collects, we have two types of data. We have directed data, which is the data the system asks to fill. For example, we need make, modulate, exact data. And these data, the system will start learning. And if you have, let's say, um, rubbish data and you have too much data, that's why we have data scientists who collect these data, analyze, and then they upload on the system. So there is a manual entry just to teach the system. This, that's where the machine learning comes. And then you have the direct inputs. For example, the pricing system. This is a direct information that uploaded on, on the system. But for the accidents, of course, you can detect, analyze, but having data scientists to analyze this data and to filter what the system needs that you can make sure that you have, just like you have said, clean database. Can you, can you give me an example, for example? Okay. You will dock with the statistics and the probabilities. For example, I can know that in such cases, if there is no decision making, we can work on percentages. If, for example, you know in the IT, there's something called if statement. You can check if percentages, for example, above 60 percent, then go with that decision. You cannot be sure 100 percent in such, in such scenarios. That's why the system keeps learning, and every single new case, this is a new, let's say, input where the system they can rely on later. I hope that answers the question. Uh, hi. Uh, um, what is your rec recommendation uh, while dealing with AI? One of the major factors is uh, 
that the investment in AI is being accelerating in a ma massively uh, and many changes uh, are being implemented. So when you take the decision that I want to use this technology, after two months it <laughs> might be backdated, you know? So what is your best recommendation in here? Okay, should, should I go? So uh, AI, it's not only the way of, when we say we need to implement AI, doesn't mean that you need to rely fully on, on AI. AI, as we said, you collect the data, and this is how you build the scenarios your system should react with. So for any new technology, you implement this new technology to improve the cycle and the process. Doesn't make necessarily that you have to change the way you are using. So having a new technologies and the new, let's say, changes, that will also improve the cycle, will not stop you from having this one, just like a software update for what you are for what you are doing. And of course, that will not need too much change and training. That might be slight changes for the sake of cycle improvements. Uh, can, can I add yes. a little bit? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll add a little bit on that because I, I go what you mean. Um, <laughs> this is where, as you remember earlier, I was mentioning build or buy, okay? Now, you have to be realistic with yourself in your case, and I don't know if you manage a big company or a small company. But first, as you were mentioning now, like analyze what are you trying to solve for, because you're not gonna change completely a company from one day to another. Then build a plan, which means prioritize what is that is, has the most impact for you. And it goes down to the basic consultancy thing, right? It, it, it is very much okay. Right now we have Good operations, let's, say, let's bring a case, okay? Let's look at a specific case. We have good operations, but terrible customer service. I'm, looking customer, I'm, I'm losing customers because my customer service is terrible. Now, how big is your company? Let's say you have a medium-sized uh, insurance business. Um, maybe hiring a whole team of developers, you can't because it's too much, but you could spend your money in the real investment actually in a human, and the human could be your chief data officer, uh, which is a position that actually is quite overlooked sometimes. No one thinks about it, but a chief information officer, not necessarily the CTO, because there were a CTO in the past was very much to be the technical person, but by the fact that you can literally find anything online, like, uh, you know, tech is cheap, all you need to do is to find someone that can help you driving these decisions, right? So let's say you get a CTO, uh, sorry, a CDO or a CIO, um, and then you, the, together you have to decide, okay, what type of solution do we need to solve this issue? And even there, you realize that most of these solutions are available out there in the market. And for medium, small, medium companies, my suggestion is always buy, don't build. Why? Because your question is essentially, how do I beat obsolescence as the technology changes? And the answer is the same as, how do I beat uh, cyber threats as cybersecurity uh, changes, it's simple. Go to a big player, because whilst your core business is to do insurance, their core business is to do tech. And so they invest, they have like the best developers, and you know, it's no brainer for you, you have a fixed fee for, per, per month, really. And Andrea, just let me to add something that, when we talk about AI, we don't talk about a fully, fully intelligent system. We are talking about a system that learns from the experience and from the data we are collecting, and there is a s some scenarios and some single parts where you can, where, where you need to implement the AI. So it doesn't mean that your company will rely completely on AI, just like ChatGPT, for example. No, it's, it's some certain parts will rely on AI, for example, damage, damage detection, damage detection, for example, accident way. So some kinds of, of, the, of, of the cycle will be managed by the AI, not full cycle. Any other questions? Also, sorry, I'll add another piece because that was, was a very good question. Remember one thing, exactly because what you just said clicked with me. You also, what you don't want, and again, this is my personal uh, view, you never want a one-stop shop always because sometimes <clears throat> you need to differentiate the risk, right, and business continuity. So the fact that you can address only certain part of your business is actually a good thing. Because in that case, you give yourself space to look at other solutions as you go. So that's general advice, I think. Yes. 
اه معلش يعني مساء الخير مهندس محمد راح احكي باللغه العربيه بس شوي حتى تكون الصوره اوضح يعني بدي احاول بس شوي اوضح الفكره اللي كانت بالسيشن الاول وما كانت واضحه لانه بجوز الوقت كان ضيق موضوع عدد القضايا الهائل جدا اللي عم بتعاني منه شركات التامين بالمحاكم واللي الجزء الاساسي منه بعيد عن وسائل الحل البديله والوسطات هي الجزء الاساسي اختلاف التعويض وتقدير التعويض واللي باساسه قضائيا اللي عم بيقوم فيه الدور اللي هو ما يسمى بالخبير او الى اخره من التسميات. الان للاسف يعني في على بحسب الواقع الان المنظور الخبراء عم يعني عم بتجاوزوا او جزء اساسي منهم عم بتجاوزوا كثيرا في عمليه تقدير حجم الضرر وتسعيره حتى يصل بالنهايه الى مبلغ التعويض اللي القاضي بينستند له بقرار الحكم بالمحصله. الان السؤال ببساطه انه الذكاء الاصطناعي وهي التكنولوجيا الاي اي وين ممكن نوظفها؟ بحيث ممكن تسعفنا حتى تكون تقارير الخبراء اكثر شفافيه سواء بمرحله تحديد الضرر او تسعير هذا الضرر حتى ما يضل هو فقط يعني نسميه ماسك الاختام ولا ينطق الا عن الـ 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 يعني الاشياء المحسومه الغير قابله للنقاش، طبعا ما معرفتي انا بوسائل التقاضي والاعتراض على تقرير الخبره ولكن انا بحكي من الواقع اليومي واللي اذا بدنا نحكي عن مؤشر عن 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 مشكله حقيقيه هي المشكله في المبالغه في تقارير الخبره، يعني الان في عندك متضرر عم تساله ليش عم بتروح على القضاء؟ في جهه عم تمنحه تعويضات من هائلة. بناء على تقارير خبرة احنا كقطاع تأمين عم نعاني من منه وعم نحط علامات استفهام على جزء كبير من هاي التقارير فالآن يعني حتى نكون قد يكون هاي الآن التكنولوجيا قادرة على ضبط هذه التقارير انا ما بقول انها تضبطها بمعنى يعني انه ما تكون يعني تعطي التعويض الحقيقي ولكن اذا في عوامل معينة وعوامل سلبية قد تكون تساهم في شفافية تقارير الخبرة والتسعير بالشكل الدقيق وتحديد احجام الضرر بالشكل الدقيق بحيث يصل تتقدم المعلومه للقاضي بالشكل الصحيح حتى يصل الى قراره العادل لجميع الاطراف دون اشحاف شكرا نعم شكرا على سؤالك بس هي توكينج ابوت هاو تو انتجريت بين ذا اي اي اند ذا ايشوز ذات موست اوف ذا كلايمز وين ذي جيت اكسيدنت ذي جو تو ذا سوت اند ذي سوت ذا انشورنس كومباني هاو ذي كان اي اي هيلب ذيم باي سوفر سو okay. so, بشكرك على سؤالك زي ما تفضل معالي لما حكى اليوم عن توظيف هاي اليوم الخبرات والبرامج اليوم اليوم احنا بالاردن وشفنا كيسز يعني احنا اليوم عندنا اكثر من 70 الف كليم تم معالجتها اليوم ثرو جو كليمز وشفنا عدد كبير من الحالات اليوم اللي تم اصدار تقارير خبره لا تستند على واقع فعلي وتم فيها مبالغه واضحه في اسعار القطع في 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 حجم الضرر اليوم المشكله الاساسيه هي في وجود تشريع يسمح اليوم ب الاعتماد على التكنولوجيا اليوم وعلى الانظمه الموجوده اليوم للتسعير، هذا القرار اليوم اكيد راح يحمي شركات التامين اليوم واكيد ما راح يكون في مصلحه الاشخاص المنتفعين اللي انت حكيتهم اليوم او الجهه اللي بتحارب هذا النوع اليوم من العداله والشفافيه الموجوده. طبعا اكيد احنا عم نحاول واكيد مع الاتحاد اليوم ومع الشركات نحاول ناخذ تشريع ولكن توظيف سيستمز اليوم الذكاء الاصطناعي او المشين ليرنينج او حتى اتمته المعلومات اكيد راح تساهم ب منع الفرودز وتوفير اليوم عدد هائل يعني احنا بدون فرودز فقط على عمليه التسعير يعني قدرنا نوفر اب تو 35% على شركه على شركه التامين فما بالك بالكيسز اللي اصلا فرود كيسز متعمده تم تغيير فيها بعض القطع احنا عارفين عن هذا الموضوع وان شاء الله بهمه الاتحاد وبهمه اليوم الشركات اليوم ان شاء الله راح يكون في لنا بصمه وقدره على مساعده بالتشريع على 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 اعتماد هيك انظمه حدا عنده سؤال ثاني؟ I think we are done. Thank you all for coming Thank here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. شكرا للسيد محمد ابو حمده ومستر انجيا ماريا وادعو دكتور مؤيد كلوب لتكريم رئيس اللجنه والمتحدث ايضا.
شكرا لكم شكرا دكتور مؤيد وشكرا للسيد محمد ومستر اندريا خلونا بس قبل لو سمحتوا بعد اذنكم يمكن هي مش موجوده باجنده اليوم لكن في كلمه للسيد محمد الناصر رئيس قسم التسويق وتطوير المنتجات من زين كاش للحديث عن دور زين كاش في قطاع التامين فليتفضل اوكي يا من هون يا اوكي اهلا وسهلا تفضل مساء الخير جميعا في البداية بحب أشكركم على هذا التنظيم الرائع صراحة بالنسبة لليوم بس بدي أعطي نبذة قصيرة عن دورنا إحنا كزين كاش كوننا راعي لذهبي لهذا المؤتمر طبعا اليوم احنا كيف وبدي اتطرق لدور الشركه اليوم كيف في دعم قطاع التامين في الاردن. طبعا في البدايه اسمحوا لي اني اشكر بالنيابه عن اخواني الاعضاء الاداره التنفيذيه لشركه زين كاش لمنظمين هذا المؤتمر. وبالمناسبه هاي بس بدي اشارككم او اسلط الضوء بالنسبه لموضوع التركيز على دور الشركات اللي هي التكنولوجيا الماليه مثل شركه زين كاش وكيف تعكس هذه الشركات رؤيه السيد الساده بنك المركزي الاردني في في مجال اللي هو الشمول المالي في الاردن فلو تطرقنا اليوم ونظرنا لل الرؤية الاستراتيجية للبنك المركزي وعرضهم للبرنامج الوطني للشمول المالي لعام 2023 و 2027 منلاحظ أنه في تركيز اليوم وحسب كمان ما الأخوان قبل قليل الشيء اللي تطرقوا له في موضوع اللي هو التحول الرقمي منلاحظ أنه التحول الرقمي اليوم أصبح شيء أساسي في معظم القطاعات سواء كان في قطاع التامين في قطاع التعليم قطاع الاتصالات او حتى اللي هو القطاع المالي فاليوم احنا بالنسبه لنا كزين كاش كبدايه احنا اليوم زين كاش هي كشركه اليوم واحدة من الشركات التابعه لشركه او لمجموعه زين في الكويت طبعا من فتره من عده سنوات شركه زين الجروب المجموعه ركزت على مفهوم ايجاد ذراع اخر بالاضافه لذراع الاتصالات اللي هو ذراع التكنولوجيا الماليه. طبعا هون هذا التركيز اجى من عده سنوات ليش؟ لانه في اهميه في ايامنا هاي في موضوع اللي هو التركيز على الفنتك او التكنولوجيا الماليه وبالتالي تم تاسيس شركه زين كاش في الاردن لانه اليوم طلعت مجموعة زين انه السوق الاردني اليوم هو من احد الاسواق اللي اللي واصله لمرحله الماتوريتي في مجال التكنولوجيا الماليه ومجال الشمول المالي بشكل عام، طبعا وهذا احنا واضح بالنسبه لنا كلياتنا من خلال دعوات اللي هو الاخوان في البنك المركزي او حتى اللي هي وزاره الاقتصاد الرقمي وغيرها في انه اليوم تدعم دائما الشركات والبنوك في عمليه التحول الرقمي في مجال اللي هو التكنولوجيا المالية وبالتالي تحقيق أكبر كم ممكن في من ناحية اللي هو الوصول إلى مرحلة متقدمة في مجال الشمول المالي في الأردن طبعا من هون شركة زين كاش دخلت واتبعت استراتيجية محددة في هذا المجال تبنت الرؤية كأحد الشركات اللي تبنت الرؤية تاعت البنك المركزي وبالتالي قدمت حلول رقميه في مجال الدفع الالكتروني وهذه الحلول الرقميه تمت من خلال طرح تطبيق على الهاتف المحمول هذا الهدف منه هو الوصول انه التسهيل على العملاء اليوم من قطاعات مختلفه سواء العملاء اللي هو في قطاع البنوك او حتى في القطاعات الاخرى مثل قطاع التامين وغيرهم التعليم وغيرهم من القطاعات الثانيه فاصبح اليوم في تسهيل على الشركات او سوري على الافراد في عمليه اللي هو فتح المحافظ الالكترونيه وبالتالي احنا اليوم صار في عندنا تركيز مش فقط على العملاء اللي 
ما عندهم إمكانية على فتح الحسابات المصرفية أو في البنوك صار أصبح الأمر متاح لكافة الشرائح اليوم في المجتمع لتقديم خدمات دفع إلكتروني ومحافظ إلكترونية على أساس أنها تغطي كافة شرائح المجتمع اليوم في الأردن ومن هذا المنطلق شركة زين كاش اليوم قدمت طبعا خدماتها من خلال التطبيق الهاتف المحمول واليوم من خلال الأرقام إذا بدي أستعرض معكم بعض الأرقام عن تجربتنا اليوم إحنا في مجال التحول الرقمي وتقديم التكنولوجيا المالية في سوق الأردن فوصلت مثلا اليوم زين كاش حاليا واصلين إحنا تعدينا الخمسمية ألف مشترك معنا في المحافظ الإلكترونية بالإضافة إلى أنه الشركة اليوم أصبح أو الأرقام من ناحية أرقام التشغيل اليوم إحنا بنشغل تقريبا بحدود 13 مليون عملية دفع إلكتروني في الأردن وهاي العمليات الدفع تقدر قيمتها تقريبا بحدود مليار ونصف المليار دينار أردني خلال العام السابق وبالتالي هذا بأكد أنه اليوم في حاجة كان فعلا لعملية التحول الرقمي وعملية اللي هو تقديم التكنولوجيا المالية في السوق الأردني مثل غيرها من الأسواق الأخرى في العالم أو حتى في المنطقة طبعا من هذا, المشت... من هذا المنطلق طبعا إحنا اليوم كزين كاش قمنا في اتباع استراتيجية واضحة وكانت هاي الاستراتيجية مبنية على أساس أنه إحنا نبدأ نبني علاقات استراتيجية مع شركات من مختلف القطاعات فمثلا قدمنا كان عندنا علاقات استراتيجية مثلا مع قطاع البنوك كان عندنا علاقات استراتيجية مع قطاع اللي هو الاتصالات قطاع التعليم حتى اللي هو قطاع التأمين فاحنا مثلا اليوم من خلال اذا بدي اسلط الضوء اكثر على موضوع اللي هو قطاع التامين كوننا احنا بمؤتمر مختص في مجال التامين او في هذا القطاع الحيوي في في الاردن اليوم اذا بدي اسلط الضوء برضه على او اركز وادخل بالعمق في الحديث اللي تفضلوا فيه اخواني هلا قبل قليل في مجال اللي هو الانشورتك ومجال اللي هو الانفنتك وكيف فينا نقدم حلول عملية اليوم تخدم هذا القطاع في سوق الأردن منلاحظ مثلا أنه اليوم في عنا يعني ثلاث محاور وأكون معكم صريح إحنا اليوم يعني خلال المؤتمر وحديثنا سواء كان في الأمس أو اليوم مع عدة شركات يعني كان في حديث ودي هيك بيننا وبين الشركات في هذا القطاع على أساس أنه ندرك أو إحنا اليوم نلتمس ونعرف وين فينا مجال أو وين في مجال أن نقدم تعاون في مجال اللي هو الربط مع التكنولوجيا المالية في قطاع التأمين فلاحظنا أنه في أن مشكلة عامة وهاي المشكلة اللي هي في في مجال اللي هو الكلام مانجمنت فاليوم يعني لاحظنا في عدة شركات اليوم تأمين أنه في عندهم مشكلة في عملية اللي هو التحصيل أو دفع الكليمز لا سواء للأطباء أو غيرهم أو غيرهم فاليوم إحنا زين كاش عملنا علاقات مع عدة شركات وخلال هذا المؤتمر طبعا إحنا وقعنا عدة اتفاقيات مع شركات تأمين من خلال هذا المؤتمر على أساس أن إحنا نقدمه حلول رقمية في مجال الدفع الإلكتروني فمن ضمن هاي الحلول اللي هي مساعدة هاي الشركات على أساس أن نربط مع تطبيق زين كاش اليوم المتوفر عند شريحة كبيرة من العملاء بحيث أنه يسهل على شركة التأمين اليوم بكل سهولة أنها تدفع هاي المطالبات أو هاي الكليمز للأطباء أو لهدول الأشخاص بطريقة فورية وآنية بعيدا عن اللي هو الكاش أو الشكات أو غيرها وبالتالي اليوم إحنا وجدنا أنه في فعلا في مبالغ مالية كبيرة جدا بتم دفع اليوم من خلال هاي المطالبات للأطباء وغيرهم من خلال اللي هو الشيكات أو من خلال النقد بس بدي أتطرق لنقطة بالنسبة للي هو اليوم البنك المركزي برضه ووزارة الاقتصاد الرقمي تطرقوا إلى موضوع وهذا الشيء طرحوه في السوق الأردني اليوم اللي هو موضوع اللي هو الإلكترونيك كي واي سي الإلكترونيك كي واي سي طبعا كان في تعليمات واضحة وتشريعات واضحة وتم تطبيقها 
عند البنوك وحتى المحافظ الإلكترونية وهذا سهل كثير على الشركات وعلى العملاء حتى في عملية فتح المحفظة الإلكترونية بحيث أنه ما يتم يكون في بيبر وورك ليوقع عليه العميل وهذا وبالتالي العميل أصبح اليوم بكل سهولة وهو قاعد ببيته أو مكتبه أو غيره أنه يفتح المحفظة الإلكترونية خلال لحظات خلال أقل من 30 ثانية أو دقيقة بيقدر العميل اليوم أنه يفتح المحفظة ويبلش يشتغل ويستقبل فيها فلوس ويستخدم هاي الفلوس في في عدة مجالات وبالتالي هذا سهل علينا اليوم أنه احنا نقدم هاي الخدمات ويصبح اللي هو موضوع تقديم الخدمات الدفع الالكتروني وربطها مع القطاعات بما فيها قطاع التامين اصبح اليوم يسهل علينا وبالتالي نحول هذا الكم من الدفع الالكتروني النقدي والشيكات الى لتحويلها بالتعاون معكم الى دفع الكتروني من خلال المحافظ الالكترونيه. النقطة الثانية والمهمة اللي هي برضه اتفقنا او صار في عندنا اليوم اتفاقيات مع بعض الشركات التأمين لعرض منتجات هاي الشركات من خلال تطبيقنا وبالتالي نعرض هاي الخدمات على شريحة تتكون تقريبا من نص مليون عميل هاي الشريحة اليوم اصبح عندهم قدرة انه يدخلوا من خلال التطبيق ويطلعوا على منتجات شركات التامين المختلفه وبالتالي اصبح العميل بيقدر انه اليوم برضه انه يدخل ويشتري منتجات شركات التامين والبوالص مثل بولص التامين الصحي او اللي هو تامين السياره وغيرها وغيرها من خلال التطبيق وبتم الخصم واصدار البوليصه التامين بشكل مباشر من خلال التطبيق وبالتالي هذا بسهل عمليه التحصيل النقدي وعمليه اصدار البوالص بطريقه سهله وامنه وسريعه بنفس الوقت يعني انها طريقه انيه ولحظيه. واخر شيء بدي اتطرق له اسمحوا لي اللي هو انه احنا اليوم برضه في شركه زين كاش بنقدم بوابه دفع الكتروني بتسهل برضه على العديد من الشركات اليوم انهم يربطوا هاي البوابه من خلال التطبيقات الخاصه في شركات التامين والمواقع الالكترونيه الخاصه في شركات التامين، وبالتالي اصبح اليوم لدى هاي الشركات فرصه انهم يزيدوا عمليات التحصيل من خلال اللي هو الدفع عن طريق البطاقات ومن خلال اللي هو البوابه الالكترونيه الخاصه في زين كاش، وبالتالي هذا الامر راح يسهل على هاي الشركات عمليه التحصيل الاني والفوري لخدمة هاي الشركات في القضاء على موضوع اللي هو التعامل النقدي وتحصيل المبالغ بشكل فوري طبعا في الختام اسمحوا لي اني اشكركم مرة ثانية على حسن الاستماع واحنا اليوم من خلال هذا المؤتمر في عنا بوث اذا في حدا عنده اي استفسار او عنده اي معلومة اضافية بحب انه التيم تبع زين كاش اوريدي موجود في البوث تاعنا بنرحب فيكم في البوث تاعنا تاخذوا نظره اوسع واعمق عن الخدمات والمنتجات اللي احنا بنقدمها وبرضه احنا جاهزين كلياتنا للاستفسار عن اي استفسار لكم او اجابه على اي سؤال بتحبوا انه نتناقش فيه بشكل مفصل وشكرا لكم جميعا ويعطيكم الف عافيه. شكرا شكرا للسيد محمد الناصر رئيس قسم التسويق وتطوير منتجات من زين من زين كاش آه لو سمحت مستر محمد آه الدكتور يرغب الدكتور مؤيد كلوب مدير الاتحاد الاردني للتامين لتكريمكم تفضل دكتور شكرا للحضور الكرام والان ارجو التوجه للغداء اللي هو اليوم بدعوه من الشريك البلاتيني لهذا المؤتمر ناس كوري صحتين مقدما ونلقاكم مساء في سرايا بالبيتش كلوب للحفله الثانيه من المؤتمر المؤتمر العقبه للتامين